What's up everybody, how's it going? Today is story time day. That's right, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the story of my first ever software engineering job interview. On this channel, I've talked about my interviews at Google, at Facebook, I've even shared some of my failed coding interview stories at Lyft and Two Sigma, but I've never talked about my very first software engineering job interview, which is a very unique one, and I wanna do this in this video. I think that there are a few lessons that we can extract from it, namely four lessons, and hopefully you'll find it insightful. So without further ado, sit back, grab your beverage of choice, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and let's dive into the story. So this story brings us way back to late December 2016, so over four years ago from the date that I'm filming and releasing this video, which is absolutely mind-boggling for me to think about, it has been over four years since my very first software engineering job interview, and I had just graduated a couple of weeks earlier from my coding boot camp. I was brand new to software engineering and to the job search process, and one of the very first companies that I applied to was this one. It was a very small company at the time. I think they only had three or four people working there. The name of the company and of their product was and is, because they're still alive and thriving right now as far as I know, uh, but so their name was Replit, repl.it. In fact, you might be familiar with that company. You might even use their product. If you're not familiar with their product, they basically offer an online code editor that you can use to build any sort of application that you want. You can execute the code right then and there. They even have a, a collaborative editor now. They offer the ability to actually like host and deploy applications. They've really grown a lot. It's a really awesome website and or product rather. And I had used it a ton during my coding bootcamp. I would always go on Replit to you know code up uh, anything, algorithms and uh, you know projects and all sorts of things. I really liked their product. And so near the end of December, a couple of weeks after my coding bootcamp, I noticed on their website that they were hiring. I think they had a, you know, a jobs page and they just said, uh, you know, we're hiring software engineers. Send us an email if you're interested. Tell us about something you've built recently. And so I sent them an email told them what I had been working on recently, who I was, I'll probably put a screenshot of the email somewhere on the screen here. And to my pleasant surprise, they answered within a couple of days and basically told me that they wanted to interview me. And so this brings me to the very first lesson of this interview experience, which is that even though I've been the first person to say in the past that when you're applying for jobs, especially in the software engineering industry, Applying online is probably the worst strategy that you can do because it's just very easy for your application to go nowhere. There is an exception to that, which is when you are applying to a very small company, which they were at the time, especially a company that literally puts their email on their contact page or on their jobs page, you actually have a pretty high chance of getting your email or your application seen by a real human being. And I know this for a fact because now, you know, this, these days I run my company, Algo Expert. By the way, if you're preparing for coding interviews or your systems design interviews, then you check out my company, Algo Expert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C L E M, for a discount on the platform. But so at Algo Expert, we're also a comparably small company, at least from a team point of view. And I know for a fact that we see basically most contact messages that come our way. Now, of course, this is not an invitation for you to contact us looking for a job. We're not hiring right now, but I do wanna just emphasize the fact that the smaller the company is, the more likely you are actually to get in front of a human being and to get an interview. So if you have a company or a product that you really enjoy using and you happen to see on their team page or their, their about page or jobs page that they have an email or some sort of contact form and they invite you to reach out to them, then definitely do, you might land an interview from it. Anyway, going back to the story, they responded to my email and they decided to offer me an interview. And so the interview process began. Now their process did not involve your classic algorithm style coding interviews, like the ones that we prepare you for on Algo Expert, which makes sense because like I said, they were a very small startup. They really needed someone to 
you know, jump in and start building stuff. And so it didn't really make sense for them to necessarily assess me with just an algorithm style interview. Instead, they had me build a little project. First, they had me build one just, you know, from the comfort of my own home. And if that went well, they told me that they would fly me out to the San Francisco Bay Area. And believe it or not, I did the project at home, took me, you know, about a day, and they liked it enough to fly me out. And so I kid you not, they flew me out uh, the, the week or a few days before Christmas. It was like December 18th, I think, 2016. And I remember I felt like absolutely just in awe. I was like, I just graduated from this coding boot camp where I took a pretty big gamble to jump into the software engineering industry because I've been told that you know it's a very high demand industry and that I'll have an easy time getting a job. And there I was getting flown out, all expenses paid to you know the San Francisco Bay Area, which is where I wanted to go as someone from New York. And uh, you know, for a small company like that, and I was like, whoa, this is like incredible. And so once I was there, I stayed there, I think for a couple of days, I hung out with the team. I built another project with them in person. You know, they had me build something a little bit more robust. I think that I worked on a collaborative editor. So back then they didn't offer the collaborative feature on their editor, you know, the, the sort of Google Docs style editor. And so that's what I kind of worked on, kind of tried to build. And otherwise, you know, hung out with the team, went to dinner with them or to lunch or whatever, had a really good time. They were really nice. And by the way, this entire process, not only did they pay me to go out there, but they also paid me for my work. I forget if they paid me for the work I did while there, or if they paid me just for the work that I did to get there, like the take home assignment. But either way, they paid me really generously. And I was just like, like, this is awesome. And just overall, they gave me a great experience. And I came out of it thinking like, this company is legit. Like if this is representative of the entire software engineering industry, then I made the right choice going to the coding boot camp, and I was just left really happy and you know well pleased by this company. And so this brings me to lesson number two. And lesson number two, I think, is going to be more relevant to if you're building or running a company rather than to you know the the software engineer interviewing at the company. But I just want to really commend the Replit team and, and their founders because I think that giving a good experience to your candidates and treating them well, even if they don't have much experience, I had zero work experience, goes a long way. It shows that you're like a good company. And, you know, not that I'm like a big deal now and that this video is gonna, you know, help them a ton, but look, I'm making a video that tells, you know, a lot of people that this is a great company and puts them in a positive light. And that's largely because they gave me a great experience when I interviewed there. So, you know, you get good karma by, by treating your candidates well. And also you don't get roasted by Joshua Fluke on YouTube. But so, okay, the interview at that point had ended. I remember you know, I flew back from the San Francisco Bay Area to New York. I had finished the process. The work that I had done in person over there hadn't been particularly amazing in the sense that I hadn't built an actual you know, collaborative editor. I had done a little bit here and there. Um, I remember I had felt a little bit overwhelmed because I was suddenly thrown into a production grade code base and like I said, I didn't have any work experience. This was my first time developing in a real world project. And so it had been pretty tough for me to feel like I'd done well, but it turned out that you know I didn't get the job. They, they ended up rejecting me. And I remember I was pretty disappointed. I mean, I had gotten really invested in the process and the company. I'd started kind of daydreaming about, oh, what if I get this job and I get to work on this product that I've really enjoyed using and I get to move to the San Francisco Bay Area, which is where I had a few friends and I had this whole like fantasy of, oh, you know, Silicon Valley and the entrepreneurship and all that. And, you know, it didn't work out. And I remember I was really disappointed and I had a pretty brutal job search process that followed this interview. You know, I've said this many times in the past, but I had to go through you know, hundreds of applications that went absolutely nowhere. I got a few interviews here and there in January, February, but unfortunately didn't get offers from them. And it took a while for me to get my, my big break with Google, which turned out great for me eventually. But during those times, during those couple of months, it was really hard, really disappointing. 
And I remember I kept thinking, like, if only had gotten that job at Replit, like things would have been so good. And so this brings me to the final two lessons that I want to share with you from this experience. The first one is that when you're applying to a small company, that is the one downside of applying to a small company is that if you don't have much work experience, or if you don't have much experience in general, it doesn't really matter that it's a work experience, but just experience as a developer, you may have a hard time passing their interviews and just generally speaking, being qualified for the job. Because if you really think about it, a small company, especially one that only has three or four employees like they did, is going to be really looking for someone who can immediately get up to speed, get ramped up in the code base, contribute, make meaningful changes. And if you're brand new to software engineering, like I was coming out of a coding bootcamp, that's going to be tough. You're also not really going to be able to get the same kind of mentorship that you might be able to get at a larger company. Now, that's not to say that the experience at a small startup like that wouldn't be valuable. It would be. But again, from their point of view, it might be tougher to justify hiring you. And so you're just going to have a harder time, in my opinion, landing that job at such a small company. And I, I can feel this myself running Algo Expert, our company. If we were to hire, let's say, a software engineer right now, we really would need someone who could immediately make meaningful changes. We don't really have the capacity or the luxury to afford to train someone and to mentor them and to have them ramp up over three months or six months. No, we wouldn't be able to do that. We just don't have that luxury. Whereas a company like Google or Microsoft, Amazon that are huge, right? Even a mid-sized company, they might have that opportunity. So that's just uh, one lesson to learn here that the smaller the company is, the more you really will have to be able to prove that you are an independent software engineer who can ramp up super quickly. Now, the fourth and final lesson that I want to bring up, this one is a little bit more kind of philosophical or emotional, whatever you want to call it. And it's just that you're going to go through failures in life, but also in the job search process if you're a software engineer. And, you know, failures are pretty tough to deal with. Like I remember, like I said, I was super disappointed from this particular um, failure from this job interview. But in hindsight, I'm actually so glad that it turned out that way. And that's not to like bash Replit or to say that, you know, I ended up somewhere better. No, not at all. It's more just to say that in hindsight, had I not been rejected from Replit, which eventually led to my interviewing at Google and getting into Google, which eventually led me to building Algo Expert, which I wouldn't have built if I hadn't gone through the coding interviews to get into Google, which also eventually led me to building this YouTube channel, which has largely been focused around Google and coding interviews and big tech companies then I wouldn't be where I am today. And obviously, I'm really happy with where my career and entrepreneurial journey has led me right now. I'm in a really good place, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Now, granted, this is all in hindsight, and I also have no idea where life would have brought me had I been accepted to Replit and gone to work at Replit, but I can't say that I'm sad with where I am. So the point that I'm trying to make here, it's not meant to be some sort of, you know, everything is meant to be bullshit or anything like that. No, it's just that you should treat any failure, any door that closes itself on you as a potential opportunity for something else. With every door that closes itself, there's another one that opens up for you. That's how I would treat it if you're going through any sort of rejection in the software engineering job search process or in life in general, try to treat it as an opportunity closed, but a new opportunity opened up. That's how I would view it. Certainly is the case in hindsight for me with this, and I think it'll help you, you know, deal with any rejection that you're going through. Anyway, that's the story that I wanted to share with you. Hopefully you found it insightful, interesting, the four lessons, hopefully they meant something to you. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Can you relate to it? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Smash the like button if you forgot earlier. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. Instagram if you like pictures, and otherwise I will see you in the next video.